Hey, and welcome back to the Can-Am Garage. I was <clears throat> had these two kits I was going to mix and match, match pieces with to create an interesting little, well, an interesting different kit bash with. And seeing one of them is old and never been reissued, I figured I could show you what's inside the kit, even though they are pretty simple. <clears throat> the first one is 132nd scale Ravel, a.k.a. Monograms, old 132nd scale tooling of a Mac R. Showing you this because this is the one that's going to get the part from the other kit, and I want to document something that caught my eye when I was going through this earlier. The kit box, as you can see, shows one, one, uh, one stripe, decal stripe variation, and then a second one on the side, which is cool. But <clears throat> when you open the box up, my cat trying to be helpful. When you open the kit box, the kit decals up. There's two sets of stripes, and you can and you can easily see that um, they don't match what's in the kit. And it's like, or is it three stri three sets of stripes? Regardless, the instructions only show two sets of stripes. And you know that's one, two, with this one obviously matching the top of the box art. Okay, so it's two sets. It's just, it is what it is. It's like, hmm, why did you go and do that? But they did it. That's the fun part. Now, the much more interesting one, simply because it hasn't been reissued, I'm just going to scoot something else out of the view of the camera. And we'll get rid of that for the moment. I'll put it over there. Stay. Is Monograms Old. 132nd scale snap tight GMC General. This is virtually identical to the recently reissued Chevy Bison. So I'm kind of hoping we'll get the GMC General. This, as you can see, still sealed. It's not going to stay that way for very long either. So, and there you go. That is what, 1978 Air. 1978, I was uh, well, a, lot, a lot younger, and these were my first models of it. heavy trucks that I could and did build successfully. Oh, um, that's, that's that old monogram plastic. And we'll get it all off. And maybe I can show you another one some other time, guys, because I got two others at the same time. And uh, they're, mm, one of them's been reissued, the other one hasn't. Hmm. Clear parts, the, draw, the passenger side door window and the main glass. Red fenders. Red cab. You'll notice there's absolutely no badging, says anything, anywhere. That's how you get away with making a Chevy and a GM the same. I'm not going to open up the bag because one these kits are pretty simple and this is the one thing I really disagreed with even back then. The air cleaner and the lube finer are both molded in black. Eh, I guess I can live with that. As a kid, knew it was wrong, didn't bother me much. Now as an adult, oops, that was the steering wheel that just went flying. Give me a moment. Oh, sorry about that. What bothers me about these, though, is not how the tire wheels mount to the tires. That's all. That's all okay. But this bothers me. There's no back. Mm. Well, we're going to work on that. I already have a. I already have a workaround, but there may be another variation of it. There's the big GMC General grill. The Bison, of course, is different, and a different topper on top of the grill. Everything else, hmm, well, a little bit of box wear. Wow, wouldn't have thought of that. Different wheels than I remember. Well, different wheels than, than in the Mac for sure. No questions asked. Hmm, I'll have to compare those to some of the others I've got. No other, no other wear. That's good. But molding it in red to chrome plate it, and oh well, what are you going to do? That's all for uh, the various stickers, permits, and etc. The nice part about these 
is over any of the reissues is these are actual decals. So in 1978, to somebody who was barely 10 years old, <laughs> yeah, I got good at decals, halfway good at decals back then, much to my surprise. And nowadays, well, I kind of suck at decals. Don't know what happened. Regardless, just to do it, just to give you a quick view of the, de the instructions, pretty simple. Easy for a 10-year-old to build, believe me. Oh, multilingual, wonderful stuff. Oops, sorry if I bumped the camera, the camera, but these things happen. I'll just move them around so you can get an idea of everything. Not complicated kits, but as an adult, it tests your skills. As a kid, easy to build. An adult, mmm, it challenges you in other ways. This or that? <laughs> no? Okay. Just shows both sides. Interesting. Didn't recall that. That's another thing that bothered me about this kit. There's nothing wrong with it, but who, what trucker in his right mind in the 70s <clears throat> would be climbing up the roof of the truck? Climbing up onto the roof of the truck to do something, to put something like a tarp on the roof of a sleeper. I, to this day, I don't know. I know Euro Europeans used to do, but they had baskets on their, on their cabs, and that was, that would make it easier. One part that I'm going to transfer over to the Mac R is this, the headache crack. And I believe it actually looks, I guess we're going to be opening up the plastic bag after all. Forgot that that. And I had to do these things. Hmm. I'll just stand by for a moment while we... Interesting. Plastic is... <laughs> coming ripping right apart with zero effort. Cool. And that would be where the steering wheel came from too, wouldn't it? Where is our headache rack? There is our headache rack and tarp on a separate little sprue because it's not... Or wasn't meant to be in Lewis Heavy Bison. I don't recall it being that back then. Maybe it is now. Got it. Don't recall looking. I thought it was... Hmm. Oh, well. Irrelevant. I thought it was a much more detailed unit instead of just a... And just something like that. We'll fill in the backs. And we'll put this onto the Mac R. Because Mac R, to me, would be more likely to be, a, be used with a flatbed. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, the tarp, eh, probably, I'll probably paint it just to see if I still have any skills of doing stuff like that. Uh, but it's not going on the roof. It's not going on the Mac either. Anyway, guys, I thought you might like to see that. And just to make sure, just to say that I'm going to do what I'm going to do before I decide to pack it all up, we will get the nippers. And I'm going to cut this one there for now that goes back back in this box this goes over here I'll quickly pack up the tiny general mm, it's just gonna fit in here anyway I've got the windows in there this that this that this the box mm-hmm mm-hmm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <clears throat> There's a reason why it was always one of my favorites. And that's why. We'll get the Mac back. This, I have to admit, is really a sweet truck. It was the, it was the last of the originals. I forget the issue date, but it was the last one I got. And then later, long, later on came the, the monogram... K100 and the T600, and then the Ford Aeromax on 132nd scale. I've had them all at one some point in my life. Regardless, <clears throat> for me, for now, I'm thinking Mac R with that is going to look pretty darn sweet. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. And yeah, definitely, like I said, the, those wheels don't look the same. Oh, no. Definitely a different wheel. Huh? Huh? Interesting. I wonder why they do that, but hey, that's to make us ask questions and make for much more interesting models. Anyway, that's it for this time. 
We'll see you all next time here at the Can-Am Garage.